Hello, and welcome to the Thai Center video series on including students with significant cognitive disabilities in school-wide positive behavioral interventions and support, PBIS. I'm Dr. Lindsay Iono Conradi from the University of Hawaii. The image on this slide depicts a group of students with and without disabilities together in a school hallway smiling at the camera. The participant outcome for this video will be to increase knowledge of a tier one intervention that can be included in the school-wide system or can be implemented by individual teachers in the classroom. This intervention is called the Good Behavior Game. The image on this slide depicts a group of school-age children with and without disabilities on a playground. Tier one in the classroom is intended for each and every student and includes four positive classroom strategies, a predictable classroom routine, three to five posted positive classroom expectations, active supervision, and acknowledgement for expected behavior. A solid tier one foundation is crucial in the classroom because research shows a direct link between teacher classroom management and student behaviors. The good behavior game is an intervention that encourages teachers to implement these tier one strategies to increase student engagement and promote a positive learning environment for all, including students with significant cognitive disabilities. Since its original version in 1969, a positive variation of the good behavior game was developed. This version aligns with the PBIS framework that is used most often in schools today. There are five consistent steps to playing the game. First, the teacher explains the rules of the game. Second, they divide the class into two teams. In addition to the original steps, the positive variation focuses on teachers reviewing classroom expectations to ensure understanding, scanning the room and reinforcing appropriate behavior by giving points for students who are following the expectations. And when the game ends, the team with the most amount of points wins and is rewarded immediately. When implementing the good behavior game with individuals with significant cognitive disabilities, teachers may want to consider the following adaptations. Dividing the class into smaller teams, groups of two to three students. Creating expectations that are visually accessible to all. Some ideas to do this might be decreasing the amount of rules to three, adding visual representation for emerging readers, using examples and non-examples when teaching, and posting them in a visible place to all students, including those who may use wheelchairs and making sure that teachers communicate a clear end goal for students. For example, allowing students to preview the reward for additional motivation. Over 50 years have passed since its original version and the good behavior game has been used across various school settings, including recess, cafeteria, and classrooms. It has also been used across various populations, including students, kindergarten through 12th grade, and students with and without disabilities. Researchers suggest that the implementation of the good behavior game may lead to a change in teacher behaviors, such as an increase of behavior-specific praise, an increase in positive statements, and a decrease of negative statements, and a change in student behavior, such as an increase in academic engagement, and a decrease of disruptive or interfering behavior. Now let's take a look at a research example. In this study, general education teachers implemented the good behavior game in three inclusive elementary classrooms for students with and without significant cognitive disabilities. Each of these classrooms were in schools that used a school-wide PBIS framework. The game was implemented during various instructional times, a kindergarten classroom during calendar instruction, a first grade classroom during math instruction, and a kindergarten classroom during reading instruction. 
Each classroom had an average of 22 students, including one student with a significant cognitive disability. The general education teachers of those classrooms were taught to implement the good behavior game, the positive variation. The steps of the game were clearly described to showcase the major elements of PBIS Tier 1 in the classroom. First, teachers would use a signal to gain student attention. The signal varied from clapping, flickering lights, or ringing the bell. Then they explained that the class would play a game where students would earn points when they were following the classroom expectations. Eventually, that signal indicated the start of a familiar and predictable classroom routine for all students. Next, teachers divided their class into two teams and asked the teams to choose a name. The teachers created a scoreboard and wrote the chosen names. If teams took longer than two minutes to choose a name, they were given a topic to choose from, such as animals or colors, and this helped them to make their decision. Then the teacher guided the class to review the classroom expectations, which included three to five positively stated rules that were accessible to all learners and posted in a visible place in the classroom. After they reviewed the expectations, it was time to begin the game. The teachers set a timer for 15 minutes and continued with instruction, math, reading, and calendar. During instruction, the teachers would scan the room to identify students who were demonstrating appropriate behavior. By doing this, the teachers increased their active supervision. They would give them specific praise and a physical point for their team which increased acknowledgement for expected behavior. When the timer went off, the class counted up the points and the team with the most points won the game and would receive their immediate reward. Teachers chose an array of rewards before implementation based off class-wide interests. Some of the rewards included fruit snacks and free time, such as drawing or reading. This bar graph is displaying the first teacher behavior that we measured, the implementation of the 10 steps of the game. Teacher one was the only teacher that implemented some of the steps during baseline before good behavior game training. They implemented three steps, including reviewing the class expectations, checking for understanding, and giving behavior specific praise to students during instruction. All three teachers did a great job implementing the good behavior game. On the graph, it demonstrates that teachers consistently implemented eight to 10 steps during the good behavior game intervention. The general education teachers were able to increase their use of tier one strategies, including reviewing expectations, increasing active supervision, and providing behavior specific praise. This bar graph is displaying the second teacher behavior that we measured, which was the number of praise statements directed toward their student with a significant cognitive disability. During baseline, only teacher one was observed directing praise to their student with a significant cognitive disability. During the good behavior game intervention phase, we saw an increase in positive interactions between all general education teachers and all three students with a significant cognitive disability. This demonstrates that the good behavior game may encourage teachers to increase active supervision that may lead to an increase of behavior specific praise and interactions between teacher and all students, including those with significant cognitive disabilities. We also measured two student behaviors of the individuals with significant cognitive disabilities across the three classrooms. The first behavior was academically engaged behaviors, which included working on tasks, sitting in their desk, and oriented towards instruction. The second was disruptive behaviors, including aggression, getting out of seat, or talk outs. This bar graph displays the data for student one who demonstrated an average increase of 64% of academically engaged behaviors and demonstrated an average decrease of 37.5% of disruptive behaviors. 
This bar graph displays the data for student two, who demonstrated an average increase of 37% of academically engaged behaviors and demonstrated an average decrease of 22% of interfering behaviors. This bar graph displays the data for student three, who demonstrated an average increase of 54% of academically engaged behaviors and demonstrated an average decrease of 24% of disruptive or interfering behaviors. Students with significant cognitive disabilities can and should have access to tier one interventions in the classroom. Here are a few action items for you to consider as you move forward in your work to include all students in PBI. Check to see if students with significant cognitive disabilities are being included in tier one classroom interventions. Ensure that general and special education teachers have time to collaborate and plan for inclusive instruction. Ask administrators to provide additional training on tier one strategies and how to include students with significant cognitive disabilities. And use the good behavior game in your classroom to support all students. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out the other videos in this series.